Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Daphne Springs, and welcome to the Unapologetically Daphne podcast. Today's guest is Ruben Warren. Hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Good. Okay, today's topic is practice what you preach. Mmm, now that, that's a big one, because there's a lot of people out who be preaching stuff, and they don't be practicing what they preach. That's... Especially on social media now, because now we're able to see all these people mm. speak a certain type of talk yep. and then don't practice what they preach mm -hmm. which brings us today to Derek Jacks. yeah Derek Jackson yep what, what, where's the whole J-A-X-N is that I don't know but that's sign number one that a nigga ain't up to <laughs> like, that's, like first of all you spelling Jackson a different way okay it's, trying to be all cool yeah, and sexy that's sign number one that something is up you hiding something why you, cause he trying to match the last name to his muscles I mean so, yeah something it's like first like you, you look you already hiding the C you hiding the C, K, the S, and the O <laughs> with an X. You hiding. You hiding. <laughs> so it's already like, we can't trust you. Yeah, it's, where the rest of the letters yeah, in your last name? Exactly, bro. You replace four letters with one. You hiding four letters, bro. What else you hiding? Okay. So with, with what's going on right now in the news is that he cheated on his wife, but he's a relationship expert. Mm -hmm. He gives a lot of women relationship advice specifically about guys being fuck boys i think that's really what his whole yeah. advice is is yeah. that but he likes to frame it in a way that you like to try to say that all men ain't shit yeah like that's i think that's the the big thing with him is that he he goes like it's one thing when you pander to women but he goes all to the extreme like just men just ain't no good ladies it's, it's hard out here like all the men just bad we we out to get you we wake up every day thinking how can we hurt women like that be, that be his whole And see, that's shit. the men's point of view. You know why men feel like this? It's because he's telling the secrets of why y'all and how y'all be fuckboys out here. So when he's exposing those secrets, <laughs> you start to look at it like he's trying to say we all late. Because y'all not. <laughs> nah. No, my thing, no, my thing with, with Derek is that, like I said, he's cool, but but he, he appeals to, like, mm -hmm. the he appeals to, like, the low self-esteem women. Like, the women who be, like... You know, I got three kids and all the baby daddies left me. You know what I mean? Like, he, he appeals to them. And it's always them type of women who need to, like, because you're a queen, you're strong, you're beautiful. These it, you these men ain't nothing. You know what I mean? It's kind of that. So he plays that up, like, really, really heavy. And he's like, this is what you need to look out for for all these men because all these men is bad. They're all cheaters and all this other stuff. And turn out, bro, you the toxic one. Like, you out here telling women to look out for toxic men and you a toxic man. But that explains why you do that because you know what to look out for because that's what you are. You know what? That's such a man's point of view because I feel like some of this stuff and a lot of the stuff that I've seen Derek talk about has been factual. I actually did a video years ago and I said I don't like men that uh, text you every day good morning but never make a plan. Because you get a lot of men that's good morning beautiful like you don't even know if I'm with another mm -hmm. man. You haven't tried to take me out to eat. You haven't tried to take me. Even if men talk about y'all always want somebody to spend money. You haven't tried to take me on a walk around the park. You haven't tried mm -hmm. to even do something as free as hiking or to just FaceTime me on a date or let's watch a movie or do anything, right? You're just always texting me, good morning, beautiful, but I never hear from your ass at night. And so I did a video about that because I don't like it. And I think that is a lot of men waste women's time. And it's like, what if I'm hanging out with you? I just met you. I'm interested and I'm getting good morning, beautiful from a man over here that never makes a plan. Mm -hmm. And Derek did a counter to my video where I was on one side and he was on one side. And he said, men that do that, um, are making women bench warmers, right? So they're just holding you off on the bench until they make up their mind because they're busy with someone else, right? That's legit information. Like, that's factual information. But my thing, too, is, though, women do the same exact thing. Like, that's... And, that, and that's... But see, and that's... But his audience is women! <laughs> of course. I get that, yeah. But, like, but... He, he frames the stuff as if, like, the things that, that men do is, like, first of all, exclusive to us. And, like, it's some evil, wrong thing. Like I said, he says a bitch room. How many men have you been like, I'm going to just keep him around, you know, to some... Basically to We're some not talking <laughs> about women right now. We're talking about men. And why y'all be out here playing games with women and telling us what we want to hear and just to have sex. That's what we're talking well, about. Well, Derek, he told you what you want to hear just to get some money. So... <laughs> I mean, I, I hear no lies. But um, I think that people now are saying that he's a scammer, he's a fraud, mm. and they're saying cancel him, and I just don't agree with that. 
I mean, I don't, I don't think, first of all, I don't think you can cancel. Anybody that has a solidified fan base, you cannot cancel that person. Because most of the people that say cancel somebody is not really anyway. a yeah. fan or a supporter mm -hmm. anyway. They're just somebody who's seen your stuff, didn't really like it or didn't care for you as a person. Mm -hmm. And then they go on to wait until you make a mistake or something big happens in your life where it can be deemed like cancelable and then they go on a whole yeah like a whole like yeah uh, tirade about tirade it, yeah. of it and try to get you canceled mm -hmm. but your fan base you can do whatever to your fan yeah, base they're and they, you. they're gonna rock with you because they're real true fans mm -hmm. it's very hard to really hurt a true fan and i think sometimes that's with personal experience mm -hmm. so if someone's a true fan i can really hurt them and deter them away from being a true fan if i did something personal to them or attack them or verbally did something to mm -hmm. them personally but people i think true fans understand the idols and the celebrities mm -hmm. As humans, right? They'll humanize you. So if you make a mistake, they understand that you made a mistake. And if you saying, hey, I grew from that mistake or I acknowledge that mistake or I'm accepting some type of accountability, they'll forgive you. Mm -hmm. At least one or two times. Hey, absolutely. I mean, like I said, you, you can't cancel anybody with a family. I mean, look at preachers who done got caught up in scandals and still got their church. Yeah, you Eddie Long I mean? was touching kids. Touching little boys. And the next they, week, they was uh, <laughs> lifting him up on the... Uh, yeah, the and they were saying, yeah. you know, don't come for their pastor. Yeah. And so. we've seen it historically in this country where famous people are held at a different statue. Yeah, and Kurt their Franklin cussed his son out. People was like, oh, I'm still both But his stone. son is grown as hell. <laughs> I mean, like, that's... you because I, to me, that's a whole nother nigga. You know what I mean? At yeah, this point, at 30, a man, yeah. you a man, you know, I'm a 30. man, I can talk to you yeah, any kind of way. Yeah. Now, if he was talking or speaking to a yeah, young kid that was, like was 19, 12 or 13, 20, I, not even 1920, I was even at 1920, but even at 1920. I say 13, I, 14. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I even 1920. I'm like, you know, because that's still, you fresh in the young manhood. But like, yeah, you over 30 though, Brand. Like, you live life, you got your opinion. Is you stuck in your ways and listen sometimes you just gotta let somebody know that you'll break their neck yeah don't play with me <laughs> on god on god <laughs> okay That's, I'll Hallelujah. That on the <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said it's just all these people want to really hold him to a stature and i feel like sometimes it's society's fault of putting people on a certain pedestal that they can't oh, live yeah, up to for sure right yeah and then people want to quickly say Derek is just making money i mean he's a celebrity influencer absolutely so with that being said is it the goal to make money? I mean, absolutely. I mean, and you you even see in in the videos that he even did addressing it. The first thing he pushed was the book. That's <laughs> how you know. That's how you know that he. And the they say the book sold. <laughs> it was six of the books were sold out on his website. Oh, I'm sure they were. Yeah, I'm sure they were because controversy sells. So of course, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you got you have all these followers. You know, it's like I'm pretty sure, like if something, you know, God forbid, some scam would happen to you, you gonna monetize that? I know you. You gonna find a way to flip it? <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about me right now, and we not gonna predict the future and just say I'm gonna flip it, but I'll probably go flip it. But anyways, with that being said, um, I also noticed that with Derek, right? Mm. He he is selling a product, but he's never lied to us and said that he had any credentials. He never said he was a licensed therapist. Mm -hmm. He never said he was a licensed doctor or that he had these certifications mm -hmm. or anything. So why okay, are but, we holding him to a certain okay. standard? Well let, well, let me flip it then. So you say he, he never said any of this, right? But then why is it then that with Kevin Samuels blowing up, everybody wants to know who is he to be giving advice? Because he's saying something, because like, like he's saying stuff that women don't want to hear. Because yeah. he, he keeps it, he just tells you the truth. He tells you, like, what it is. And so, but everybody's like, well, who is he to give me advice? But when it comes to Derrick Jackson, he's saying what you want to hear. You're like, well, who, you know, he never said that he was a relationship expert. He, he didn't do we it. We already know that, we already know that in the world, that people are going to pick and choose a side. So if mm. someone deems something is good, they're going to be more acceptable towards mm. what's the, what they're being given. If they deem something is bad, they're going to reject what they're giving. Mm. And with Kevin Samuels and the way he talks and approaches women and he speaks in a certain tone, and manner it's not um edible to most people mm -hmm. right with what Derek says is people consider Derek attractive um he has muscles he's he's chocolate he speaks in a very like charismatic he's uh, a Tyler Perry low, movie low, low. <laughs> he what he, he is that he is the quintessential Tyler Perry hero minus the light skin he <laughs> <laughs> Mighty's the 
light skin. Mine is the light skin, unfortunately. You know, Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, make sure you light skin. All dark skin men be beating your ass, and then light skin men gonna save you. They be educated, but they beat your ass. Yep, and they beat your ass. Yep. The light skin dude, he be broke, but he love him some Jesus, and he gonna treat you right. <laughs> still never show five years later that you still in that project. Still broke. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, she left a millionaire And he for still it. got brain. <laughs> I mean, if you were a millionaire, yeah, I mean, it's okay to get your ass beat every now and then. Yeah. No. You know, you, you gonna pay, he gonna pay medical bills. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you over here getting treated right and your back hurting. You can't even go to the doctor. Yeah, you know, but you, it is, yeah, hey, we all, hey, you gotta give okay. up something for something. Okay? <laughs> Everything costs. Ain't nothing free in this world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but with that being said, like, is it okay for people to give out relationship advice and they they don't have certifications or credentials? I mean, I, yeah, I, I think it's okay. Yeah, we all we all we all give and take relationship advice just with our friends and family and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't think anybody's a. Uh, I, That's a fact, right? How many people out there they grandfather or they father done cheated on their grandma or mother for years and yet it's still they dad get them some type of re relationship advice they're mm -hmm. gonna take it so just because you do something in your personal life doesn't mean that you can't mm -hmm. give out advice sometimes you're the best person to give out advice because you don't make the mistakes right which we're starting to see with him but at the same time though it's like now if you keep making the mistakes i can't really listen to you but <laughs> how many times has he been caught up I oh, i'm not saying, saying him I'm they said saying. that he done cheated a couple times yeah. but also, I've only known this, the first this time one he got situation. Caught, yeah. So, yeah. Well, you only count the time you get caught. Yeah, you can't true. count the other times. Yeah, they don't count. They don't know. So, yeah. yeah. So you can't. What you don't know can't hurt you. That that's facts. <laughs> that's how my last relationship went. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, should we hold him accountable? I mean, yeah, he even said in the video, he said, he said he's not above reproach. He said, yeah, you know, he he's he said he messed up or whatever, you know, allegedly, but. Um, for, like I said, for me, it's just the fact that he's always uh, portrayed something like I'm the answer, like I'm the I'm the answer for the women. Like this is the kind of man, and almost as if like I'm the kind of man that you need to look for. And it's like, bruh, you was out here telling these selling these women dreams, and you're you're the exact fuckboy that you're telling these women to avoid. But I think a lot of his hate is coming from men right now. Well, no, I think the well, vast, vast majority of yeah. it is coming from men. Oh, yeah. And the reason why it's coming from men is men didn't like that he portrayed himself a certain way as the perfect man. And he was exposing the secrets no, of it, other men. Hold on, let me finish. Okay, he was exposing the secrets of other men. And he was putting himself on a pedestal like he was Jesus as we could just loosely say it's like because if you see it relationship advice and saying this is what men do and this isn't right but this is how you ladies should be treated and and we kind of assuming or you portraying that you might be that man that treat them that certain type of way men are really more angry than women women i felt like okay he cheated he acknowledged it let's move on that's mm -hmm. how i feel about it see but most women feel that way because once again he says what you like but let kevin samuels get caught up in something Y'all gonna be acting just like how the men. You're gonna be like, oh, I told y'all he ain't nothing. I told you, look, Kevin Stills, look, he is gay. He is this. He's blah, blah, blah. It's gonna be the so, same yeah, thing. It's gonna be the same thing. Be the same yeah, you're right. But so we just talked to people talking to their core group of audience. Yeah. So I think just to sum it up, basically, he has, Derek has his core group of audience, which to me are predominantly black women that are single because they say 70% of black women are unmarried, right? Mm. And then so it's black women that more likely date black men and they're not getting the results that they want from this man. They're probably not even dealing with men, they're dealing with boys, right? Mm. Mentality wise. So that's his audience and he's speaking to that audience. Now where people are trying to hold him accountable is I've even heard people speak to the fact that, you know, as a society, as black people, we need to hold other black people that are giving misleading information because it's destructive to the black community. But with that being said, whether he gave that advice or he didn't give that advice, these women were still going to go on to believe that yeah because you anyway because he already spoke to what they already thought anyway so to already thought he's already, only speaking to their inner thought yeah, yeah, like, he's not to me really planting new yeah, thoughts like a lot of those women who follow him already think like you know men ain't they already have like a men ain't nothing mentality like yeah. he speaks like his core group like i said it's the it's the low self-esteem broken women like i wouldn't say that i watched a couple of his videos no i'm not i'm not i'm not saying i'm, I'm what saying you're like, trying to say i don't know i said i said his core i said his, his core group his core like like who no, i don't think that's safe to say it's women that didn't that just because 
I've been treated a certain type of way by men, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's this whole thing, you are what you attract, but let's get rid of that. It's a lot of men that are not up to par, right? Oh, of course. Uh, financially, stability, being a family man, being a father figure, just being a good person, period, right? Mm -hmm. And because I'm being treated a certain type of way by men, and this has been a continuous experience of mine, that doesn't mean that I have low self-esteem because I'm experiencing this. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. True. Would you agree? Agree. Agree. I yeah. Agree. Yeah. But I will say, though, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say it's hard for me to like because I, I get I get that there are a lot of bad men like I'm not and I, I don't like absolve a lot yeah no I'm not saying that. a lot oh yeah because there there are because a lot there are a lot of people in this world would you put yourself in that kind of place? oh absolutely not no. <laughs> and and so and that's why that's why I I push back so hard on this whole men are trash narrative because it's like because for me personally and for for a lot of men usually like most men we usually hang out with other like minded people so like the men that i rock with the men that i know especially the black men that, that's really my thing is that i don't like how the, the demonization of black men because but he's never once said black oh no of course not it's, it's assumed oh yeah yeah I know. right but I, yeah but i'm speaking in, you know uh in reference to saying you know you talk about black women and all yeah. that so, so for us it, within the black community you know we okay, get yeah, you know right. so black men we, we get i mean this, it's, it's it's yeah but we get but we get this bad rap and my thing is like all the black men that I know are upstanding fathers, are upstanding husbands. You know, those that are married, they're good husbands. So this this notion that like th like black men are just something wrong with us, that we're just inherently evil and wrong. Like I push back on that because I feel like that's that's damaging. Because because anytime black men say, oh well, black women are ghetto and blah 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 and all this stuff, everybody everybody men and women are quick to push back. Like, well, no, that's just you. That's blah blah blah. But like if a if a woman if a black woman says. Oh, well, black men ain't, ain't nothing. Black men trash. Everybody's like, yeah, girl, that's the truth. You know what I mean? Like, that's the... See, I don't believe that. So, I think people search um, for what they're attracted to. Mm -hmm. So, when you get somebody that's selling a narrative like Derek Jackson, it's because that's what people are seeking, right? Mm -hmm. But you also have other Facebook and YouTube uh, channels that talk about black love. and the black couples and about black marriages. Mm -hmm. And it's all positivity, you know, but how many people are really seeking that, right? Or how many people discuss that? They act like it's only one narrative being pushed all the time, and it's only a Derek and a Kevin Samuels narrative that's being pushed. It's also other narratives are, that's those, being but those pushed. Are ones but are they the... have millions of followers as well, mm -hmm. and they have millions of people watching their channels as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one narrative being pushed. It's it's it seems to be that the negative narrative is the one that's always being talked about or discussed on another level. Yeah, so and I think I think that's what we mean by it being pushed because that is because like you said the the black men versus black women debate is yeah. always like you always see that like constantly you yeah. know what I mean so but no like you said there are definitely tons of, of channels out there that actually do speak on positive mm -hmm. There's whole Instagram page is dedicated to black couples and yeah black and it's, it has millions of views yeah, and, and hundreds of thousands of shares and people enjoy it and watch it and comment and feel the same way about it you know about the positivities of staying in a black marriage and how did you make it work it's a whole channel uh, mm -hmm. uh, dedicated to that but it's just like People always want to focus on, on the negative. Yeah, 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 on the negative. So, so, so it, when does it become the consumer's responsibility, right? So we always put the accountability on the person um, presenting the product. Mm -hmm. But as the consumer, when does the responsibility fall on us? Well, yeah, I mean, you don't buy it. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you if you really feel like yeah. something is, is bad, you know what I'm saying, then you show them with your dollars. A perfect example, let's go back to uh, the civil rights era. Yeah. Uh, with the bus boycott in uh, Montgomery, the Montgomery bus boycott, uh, they thought like you know we, the, we don't like how the product, the bus line, is treating us, so we're gonna not get on the bus. And uh, they let a whole. But I think the people that's not getting on the bus and that are complaining and saying they don't want to spend money and cancel is the same people that is in not his core audience, as I mm -hmm. spoke to earlier. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, the people that he speaks to are very satisfied with the product that he's giving. So. Either they they're the ones that have to hold him accountable to accept his apology mm -hmm. or not to accept his apology and move on. But it's it's amazing how many other people mm -hmm. that is not his core group or his audience or his fan base and they're speaking to so negatively and harshly to him. Mm -hmm. And some of them haven't even watched but one or two videos and already made a full 
full analyzation of who he is as a person they're not like a continuous supporter because see a fan knows you you're good you're bad you're ugly where you might have mm -hmm. messed up and all this other kind of stuff but i heard people also say that 75 percent of the stuff that he says is true it's just 25 percent they feel like it's pandering women and gaslighting women so then if if 75 percent is still passing mm -hmm. that's a c it's a c i mean you know, so five more percent is it's a big minus. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, like I said, like I said, at the end of the day, I don't think it really matters for mm -hmm. him because, like I said, he got like millions of followers. So, it, you know, it, it's a bad look. Either like either way, it is a bad look for him because it's not really a bad look. He just sold out on his books. No, he did, he did. But I'm saying just as far as even he, even I think even he kind of just based on how he even had to address it and stuff. Yeah. He, he had to address it. You have to address Let me tell you what the whole thing all, that happened oh. with Real and Jada too. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with Derek. You have to address it. So if you're publicly, so you can't just ignore it. You can't just brush it up under the rug. You can't just disappear. And then because now everything you've ever said now becomes invalid, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to address things because you're so busy giving out relationship advice. Now that your relationship it's or private rocks, life has yeah. been on the rocks and been exposed, mm -hmm. it needs to be a Address from your point of view because you can't I can no longer accept relationship advice from you if you're not addressing your demons and your issues mm -hmm. and being that he addressed it and that's the reason why that book sold out mm -hmm. yeah and like I said for me is he had to address it because of how it came out it was like yeah. the side chick exposed it so it wasn't like and it was uh Tasha unwind with tasha oh yeah yeah she yeah, yeah she came out with because he too, yeah. he had said something about her like two years ago oh so she was, and they she was had, waiting yeah so she was, she was wait, she said it she said she was waiting and Ooh, she was waiting for this she, she was and, a sniper with it <laughs> yeah and i also think it's a lot of times it's the way the man handles the side chick that's mm -hmm. the reason why they get exposed I think if you are a little more top t uh, tactic so as relationship advice to Derek uh jackson um be careful how you handle side chicks. You can't just block a woman on every platform. Oh, he and did think that? that? Yeah, he blocked oh. her. She said that he blocked her on every platform. Oh, he, had it. Oh, he was asking yeah, for Yeah, so yeah, he, he was, was asking, asking to be yeah. exposed. Yeah. You can't not uh, have emotional ties to a woman and sex with a woman. Or how did he, he say He said, <laughs> that's another thing. That was know, confusing. That I know he's a preacher because... No, but she said that he gave really good head and that... His dick game was great. She said she yeah. gave well, him she a compliment. Said, well, and he so, said. which makes me think she's not just being bitter and hateful. Mm -hmm. She's mad that she got blocked, mm -hmm. right? And that it was some type of lies or no closure uh, given to her. But um, the fact that she still gave him compliments on his sex game, knowing that more women would want to have sex with him now. Mm -hmm. Well, he said they were in a sexual relationship but did not have sex. I don't understand that. That's why. That's how I know he's a preacher, though, because his, his audience is gonna be like, "Oh, that makes sense. That's deep." Like, I yes, you can. I mean, it's so deep. I don't even understand it. Is it? Because I feel like. No, it's I'm a gonna bull. say that it's next, a bull. next time if I ever get caught cheating in a relationship, I'm gonna say we had a sexual relationship, but we didn't we have, have sex. sex. That's, yeah. And that's my that's not like the thing to stick to. Yeah, it do. It it sound it like when you say it quick, you be like, "Oh wait, what you say?" But then once you analyze, you be like, "You just said some bullshit." Like that. That's how it is. But like I said, he said that. I'm like, his artist is going to eat that up. They're going to be like, yes. Because I've had sex relationships without having sex before. So I know what he's talking about. Well, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? That's, what, that's what his audience is going to say. They're going to be like, yeah. I can't oh, so it. does it mean I would? I had sex, but I was emotionally I don't know. not it, there? It just, sounded like, it just sounded like he was trying to sound deep and clever with it. And it's like, bruh, just. And he did. He sold books. He sold books. Yeah, I mean. To me, this, and I, his wife came on and they went on live man. and he got two million views yeah. in um he capitalized five hours it's on like, Facebook. It's like and everybody knows with Facebook, um, it takes a while to get your views. You can easily get two million views, but that can take like a week or days or something like mm -hmm. that. And this is to someone speaking that goes viral on there all the time. So to do two million, that's almost up equated to like um a red table talk with Will and Jada, mm -hmm. you know going viral and everybody watching he at one point he had six thousand sixteen thousand people watching at one time with that being said he brought his wife on there and she had a hat on her head i she had i mean ladies you don't have to wear makeup you don't have to but i feel but like don't she look could, like he had a reason to cheat like, yeah. <laughs> she's going over the bottom was, the side chick was bad even i had to look like yeah I, I, I get why he did it i see why yeah he had to do like it. it's just <laughs> like the way the jeans was set up the outfit the the hat it's like 
You, it, for me, it was the bonnet. No, I mean, we got saying she was asking for it, but, but I mean, it was, I mean, it was you, the bonnet for me. You know, you know. I don't even think that was a bonnet. That was a... A shower cap? It, <laughs> no, it was a hat. A wool hat. Oh, well, whatever it was, she shouldn't have wore it. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, like she didn't need to have makeup or be dressed to the nine, but she I felt like, like she, she needed to be presentable. Yeah. Because you remember the um the uh politician from Florida, Andrew Gillum. Mm -hmm. Remember his wife went on, she when you do those interviews, you should be presentable. Mm -hmm. Like especially like Meghan Markle, you should be presentable, right? Mm -hmm. You should be dressed nice and look like you're ready for an interview. And knowing it's it, like knowing the he, world is about to watch you. Too. It's like she been chasing kids all day, cooking running yeah, errands geez. and he said hey sit down and do this live it's like <laughs> but also did you see when they was holding hands like he was holding on for dear life you could just see you could tell she didn't want to be there though either like her her energy was just like oh like her energy just kind of felt like i don't even want to really yeah be here. so like, it's like she, she might be controlled I, yeah i think i think she was hurting a little bit because i mean you you got to feel some kind of way yeah but i think uh negative publicity is good publicity and that yeah. it's only gonna get better for him i mean Kiko Dash had a sex yeah. tape and made a billion dollar empire but see, another thing too that was alarming to me as well is that he never really gives um, marriage advice, right? Even mm -hmm. though he's a married man, he gives advice to single women. And with him giving advice to single women, he can do whatever he kind of want in his marriage because he's not giving marriage advice. So I don't know why people are so mad. He's talking to single women. Yeah, but like I said, it's, it's because it's because he cheated within the marriage. And like I said, and he was saying like, his whole thing is like there's bad guys that you know cheat on you and they hurt you and stuff and it's like bro you literally hurt your wife when you cheated on her in Absolutely. your bed <laughs> but he said they were separated i mean that's what i mean because that then then we have to ask the question is are you allowed to uh enter into a relationship or have sex I mean, you're allowed to do whatever having you sex want to. when you're separated because that's a different topic right mm -hmm. some people deem it as no we're separated we're just taking a break in our marriage and no you shouldn't have sex with people and some people say no you should be able to go out there and have sex so i think that that's a question that needs to be answered mm -hmm. i personally think that if you're separated and that person has moved out of the home the side chick said it was boxes in there and everything that it looks like she was moving or whatever but then maybe they worked it out is that then if he was separated, truly separated from his wife and they thought they were going to get a divorce, then I say it's okay that he was seeing other women. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for his wife to see other men and so they figure it out. Because sometimes you need to go out and see what's out in the world to really value what you have at home. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, you can move forward. But I think where he messed up, the thing I would say where he messed up with the whole side chick situation. Because was he a side chick if he was separated? No. But with that being said, where he messed up is he didn't give closure to that girl. He just cut her off and blocked mm -hmm. her from everything when he decided to get back with his wife, if he was ever separated from his wife or whatever. But he said he separated. His wife is doing an interview. They're agreeing to this whole narrative that mm -hmm. it was separation. So we have to go along with that narrative that they were separated. And if they were separated, where's the lie? I mean, if they were separated, if, that's the, if that's the story, then that's the story. You know what I mean? Then we, we there's really nothing to say. But I mean, you know, like I said, even more so though. But how you treated the the side chick though, that was foul. Yeah, you know, you don't I mean? just cut nobody. Yeah, you don't off. just cut nobody. I don't off. think you do that anywhere. He, she said she had known him for upwards towards like uh, ten years, mm. and she said they had been in communication where they would just like talk on social media. But mm. they were first acquainted like ten years ago. And if you were first acquainted with someone ten years ago, and for that person to have sex with you or a sexual experience with you without having sex with you and do all of that and then just cold turkey cut you off like block you on all social media without an explanation that's still or without that's still doing vice, stuff that he, but that's being the fuck boy that you tell women yeah, yeah that's with. what i'm saying so he that, still that's exposed character yeah you know he still exposed his character he telling women like that men are bad but i'm not that's not me but this is the you know and they turn out like bro you you the same one you you are the woman you're the man that you're telling women to avoid absolutely and and like i said that practice what you preach amen practice what you preach yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you out here, you know what I'm saying, saying one thing, but you out here doing a completely different thing, it, it's just not a good look. You know, it's just like uh, just like how Governor Newsom with the coronavirus. He was telling everybody to be locked down. Yeah. You can't go do nothing. Yeah, he Everything was enjoying should, life. He was out here doing brunches with no mask on. It's like, <laughs> bro, how you how you doing mask? How you doing brunch with no mask? But we can't we can't go outside. Like, yeah, man. that's your opinion. Practice what you preach. But my opinion is. Your life is your life. You can portray whoever you want to be in this world. 
and you could have also your private life but when that private life is exposed you need to address it and it's to your fan base it's them that need to hold you accountable or to to really ride with you or die off from you mm -hmm. so i just think that's it so it's not on us because i'm not his core fan base yeah. it's on them mm -hmm. and that's that's it and, and they're gonna rock with them like i said anybody anybody got a core them, anybody got a core fan them. base yeah. you're gonna rock with them through thick or thin so amen hey but that is daphnique springs on unapologetically daphnique i'm daphnique springs and ruben tell them where they can find you you guys can find me on ig facebook twitter all of that at ruben comedy r-u-b-y-n comedy thank you and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.